Congress have made this problem much worse. One thing is, uh, not only do we not look to the Constitution, just this past week, uh, Panetta announced and was seen to be very proud of the fact that our president now is being explicit about this, and he says that uh, he can get the authority from the UN and NATO. And, uh, and, yet, and yet, when he was quizzed, when he was quizzed by this, he says, "Oh, well, we'll inform the Congress. That means we'll inform the people when they feel like it, and that is not right. That is not the rule of law, and that has to be reversed." undeclared wars that we don't need to be involved in.
but Halaki was assassinated, and uh, he was associated with the wrong people, but he was never charged with anything. He was never given a trial, he didn't have an attorney, but he was a bad guy, and they were going to do it, and they, and they killed him. So they said a family member was also an accomplice, so they had to go get him. So a week later, they bombed and, and killed his son. His son was 16 years old, out in the backyard barbecuing. Now that is not American justice. That's America barking on something that is very, very dangerous. But the Congress hasn't been too much help lately, and the President certainly didn't resist this, but the Congress passed a bill, passed again on January 1st of this year, and, and that bill was the National Defense Authorization Act. Heels posse comitatus, and it says explicitly that now the uh, uh, federal, the U.S. military, the army, can arrest any American citizen, no. put in a prison, no. put in a prison, and deny, and, and deny an attorney, no charges made, no trial, in a secret prison indefinitely because you are a risk to the state. You know, I've been called, I've been called dangerous at times, and dangerous to the establishment. <laughs> But the, what this, is, this has been going on, it's been undermined, but even before these last couple of years, even before 9-11, we've had an undermining of our personal liberties. Either it's the attitude of the executive branch, which has been going on for years, that administrations uh, and, and, and agencies can write regulations. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd they get the right to write laws? Those are laws. They shouldn't even have this. And under a, under administrative law, you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent, as well as, you know, with the IRS code. So th this, is, this has been going on, you know, for a, for a long, long time. And what we need to do is make sure that we live, have our representatives, our president live within the law. The president can't write law. Why, why does he think that he can write laws the other day? A couple weeks ago, he said, well, the Congress is acting too slowly, and I want this law on environmentalism, and he says, I'll just write an executive order. He's not allowed to do that. So the executive order has been grossly abused, yeah. uh, but one thing is a constitutional president could, when elected, look at all the laws that were passed by executive order and repeal executive yeah. order. been the runaway war on drugs in this country. This has been very and this is this is uh, always an excuse to be able to bust into houses, no search warrants, made worse with the uh, with the Bay Patriot Act. And it, it, it boils down to, you know, what should the role of government be? Should the role of government be a, an instrument to protect us against ourselves and our own bad habits? No. But that is what they have assumed. They, they so far, well, there are some moral authoritarians that would like to get involved in, uh, in, in some of the uh, moral issues. But basically, uh, it, it says that the government uh, it was going to control us and tell us what we do economically and personally. Generally speaking, they don't, you know, mess around with our religious and spiritual freedoms and our intellectual pursuits. But forever now, for a hundred years, it's assumed that we allow the government to tell us what we can do with our own bodies, what we can smoke and drink and eat, and, and this would just lead to a total disaster. It is a total sacrifice of liberty. It's who owns your body and who owns our lives and who makes our decision. And let me tell you, there's one thing. I've met a lot of politicians. I've met a lot of bureaucrats in Washington. They are not smart enough to know what is best for you. Everything is controlled. I find it rather amazing that we have been so complacent 
that they took, took it upon themselves in Washington for political and economic and special interest reasons to deny us a choice on how we can buy our own electric motors, uh, electric light bulbs. Yeah. I mean, sure. well, why, why is it that we have uh, you know, given up this? But what I sense in this country is a lot of people who are sick and tired of it and they want to change it. Excitement is on the campus. Is the current generation that's coming into the workforce? They know and understand this, and enthusiastically support the cause of liberty, the limited government, sticking to the Constitution, looking into the Fed. This is where they get excited, but this is where I get excited as well, because it all blends in with the cause of liberty, believing and, and being confident that if we want to improve our society, if we want to take care of the maximum number of people, what we want is more liberty, not this assumption that somebody else can take care of it. It doesn't work, and I think people are realizing. I think that's what's happening now in these last five years. They're realizing this financial crisis has hit. And there's no way we can sustain this spending and deficit. And they're also, the American people, finally are coming around to being very tired of being bogged down in all these wars. That is why they're galvanizing and coming together, not only the young people, but the older people who have been sitting aside and hoping and wishing and frustrated. And now the people are coming together and saying, it's time that we reasserted ourselves, get our confidence back, understand how markets work, why we need sound money, why we need a sensible foreign policy, and the convincing evidence is that if, if, if we are humanitarians, and I believe basically everybody has a humanitarian instinct, even those who do us harm are, are motivated that way. But very often, if you argue the case for free markets and sound money, they think you're going back to the dark ages and you don't really care about people. We hear those arguments all the time. But the people who advocate big government, they're the ones who are going backwards. Big government and tyranny and dictators and kings and pharaohs, they've been around thousands of years. in history in our country where freedom was really tested and it was very successful but we came concerned more with the material benefits and less about where the where the wealth come from and why you have to have production and uh, now the wealth is consumed and we have to reassert ourselves if we want to be humanitarians and take care of the maximum number of people what we have to do is renew our understanding and belief and faith in a free market system individual liberties this, this can be restored I don't think it would take that long but we cannot do it to continue to do the same things that got us into trouble you can't solve the problem of debt by spending more money you can't solve the problem of inflation by putting more money it won't work that it doesn't take a total majority to change the world. It takes an irate, tireless minority yeah. willing to start the brush fires of liberty in the minds of men. Good ideas have good consequences, bad ideas have bad consequences. But when a good idea comes along and uh, an idea whose time has come, it cannot be stopped by governments, by tyrants, or by armies. That is where we are today. We will win this fight and restore. Okay, go ahead. Hi, Dr. Paul. 
My name is Kathy Dreyer, and I live in St. Charles County. I homeschool my three children, and I would like to know how you would protect my rights to homeschool, and do you believe that my parental rights to choose the best educational options for my children should supersede state educational mandates? Thank you. She asked a question about homeschooling and generally what my opinion is. I think homeschooling is one of the most positive things going on. That doesn't mean that everybody has to homeschool, but it means that what we need is competition. We need to defend your right. We should be in the same position with all countries. Our position for, with foreign countries should be friendship and trade with anybody who is willing to offer that and exchange that with yep. us. border disputes and internal affairs. Now, it should be uh, by self-determination. It should be regional. If there's a border dispute, it should be theirs. It should not be ours. I'm tired of worrying about the border between Pakistan and Afghanistan and not worrying about our own border. Yeah. Yes, sir. about Syria um, and Iran and Israel. And once again, the policy should be a friendship and trade with everybody and not picking and choosing winners and losers. And uh, we ought to mind our own business. The one thing that, yeah. one thing that there is no evidence for right now uh, and, and no common sense to indicate that we should be involved in Syria by dropping bombs and sending weapons over there and absolutely no rationale for going to war against Iran. And yeah. 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 There's, always, there's, always concern, there's always concern about Israel. But, and they're trying to stir up that there's a great deal of danger over there to Israel. Well, Israel has 300 nuclear weapons. Iran has none. <laughs> I mean, what, what's the reason to lose sleep over that? That's, that's not going to happen. The Iranians don't even have an air force or a navy. They're not able to, even if they wanted to, to attack anybody, and they're not going to. Their history doesn't show that. So uh, Israel is worse off for our intervention. Yes, we propped up a country like Egypt for a long time, gave them a lot of money, and Mubarak, look what happened. They finally resented his dictatorship. He was our guy, he was our dictator. So the people will throw him out. It's what the Al Qaeda's in there now. And they're disrupting the supply lines to uh, Israel. So this stuff backfires. I think Israel should have their independence and their sovereignty. We shouldn't tell them what to do on their defense of their borders. President Paul! And we should be and we shouldn't deny them the right to uh, design their own their own peace treaties. So this is what we we need to recognize that once we get in there, there's too much blowback. I don't believe, for instance, in foreign aid. At all. But not if you believe on principle of the Constitution, you're not supposed to do it, no. But does the foreign aid really help Israel? We give seven times as much foreign aid to their enemies than we give to Israel. So Israel would benefit by cutting out all the foreign aid. One more question, everybody. I'm sorry, we've got a very slight question over here, Brandon. This is the last question. This is from another Lindenman student. Good afternoon, Dr. Paul. My name is Sarah Cohn. I'm a senior at Lindenwood. And there's been a lot of recent upheaval in the media about the health care provision to make birth control free and readily available to all women in this country. What's your stance on the issue? You know, this is the issue of the day. <laughs> Who is supposed to pay for birth control pills? <laughs> you, you know, uh, the world's about to blow up economically and, and politically and militarily. And the biggest discussion so often in the headlines has been dealing with these with birth control pills. But very simply, I think the people who use birth control pills should pay for birth yeah!
part of what's coming out of the Obamacare. But what you need is a, is a right or demand, okay, you pay for this, this, and this. That's not insurance any longer. That's a mandate. It becomes, a, it becomes an entitlement if you can force an insurance company to pay for certain things. And in the old days, you could buy a medical policy that would protect you, you know, for certain things and not other things. So uh, it should be done voluntarily. It shouldn't be done by dictates. And this is what we've been living with. All these mandates, that's what government is essentially all about. Mandates. And the, the fight in Washington right now is who gets the right to mandates. But my position is we need to quit writing the mandates and let the people make their own. Certain is that we're living in the time of the end.